Simon Webb's fascinating conclusions concerning the Fenians are ones I'm going to turn to here. His idea that they just faded out after the 1880s. Well, no, Simon. They, many of them fled Ireland and moved to America, or some of them gave up on politics, etc. But let's have a look at the, what, who the Fenians were briefly first. To do this properly, I think it might be a good idea to do a long-form video on it. But for now, let's just do a brief definition of the Fenians. The word Fenian served as an umbrella term for the Irish Republican Brotherhood. And anyone familiar with the War of Independence in Ireland and the groups behind it will be familiar with that word that term and that group and their affiliation in the United States Safinian Brotherhood. Kimberley, for example, has been quite a lot of time in some of his books satirising them and the ineffectiveness of some of their plots. Some of the plots were indeed quite ineffective and quite bananas and oh, didn't work all that well. But eventually, they were the motive for us in many ways, between the Easter right behind the Easter Rising and to a degree behind the Irish War of Independence, although you could also argue that other groups had influences there and they, they're a hard organisation to pin down at times as to what they actually believed. This is James Stevens, who James Stevens comes from Kilkenny, the same part of Ireland as my father. And he's famous for being the founder of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. And very, very famous for that. Some of the bits of his life history are hard to, to pin down, as this article notes. Now, that's enough for a basic definition of the Fenians. I'm going to read out part of a speech. And if there's anyone Irish listening to me, you will know this speech. Speech at the grave of O'Donnell and Rossa. It has thought been right before we turn away from this place in which we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donnell and Rossa, that one among us should, in the name of all, speak the praise of that valiant man and endeavour to formulate the thought and the hope that are in us as we stand around his grave. And if there is anything that makes it fitting that I rather than another, I rather than one of the grey-haired men who were young with him and shared his labour and his suffering, should speak here, it is perhaps that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation that has been rebaptized in the Fenian fate and has accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian program. I propose to you then that here, by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian, we renew our baptismal vows. That here, by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man, we ask of God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of soul, as belong to Adonavon Rossa. Deliberately here we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself in the dock, Irishmen of one allegiance only. We of the Irish volunteers, and you others who are associated with the day's task and duty, are bound together, and must stand together henceforth in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition of freedom. It is Tone's definition, it is Mestral's definition, it is Rossa's definition, let no man blaspheme the cause that the dead generations of Ireland serve by giving it any other name of definition than their name and their definition. That's from a very famous speech by Patrick Pierce over the grave of O'Donnell and Rossa. Now, if I go and find you photos of that, you will see the crowd is huge that were listening to that and that the British government was... <sighs> Not amused by this speech, which saw hundreds and hundreds of volunteers from the Irish Volunteers and other associated groups, such as the Irish Citizen Army, at that funeral. Let's see if I can find some stuff with that. The idea that the feed is just faded away. Oh, no. The funeral as political theatre in Ireland is a very real thing. And these groups had a very big influence on the on the history of uh, of Ireland. Okay, here's British Pate. There's no sound on this. I should imagine it being so old. Uh, 
That's Tom Clark who took part in the Easter Rising there. It seems to be a a mismatch of stuff. I wonder if they've got the really got this right. Let's have a look. Although Tom Clark was a known figure even in that era. Does that look like a legacy that's faded away? That's a Donovan Rosser. Yes, I recognise his face. Does that crowd look like a legacy that's faded away? That crowd in the centre of Dublin doesn't look like a legacy that's faded away to me. And again, there'll be links to show the, the, the influence of these people and to give you some background material. That one speech over Donovan Ross's grave is considered by some people to be the match that lit, lit the Irish Revolution up. Uh, So it, saying the Fenians just faded away is a very silly conclusion. If uh, revolutions do ebb and flow in Ireland, which is a better conclusion, it's fair to say that they ebbed off to New York and the money flowed back to keep revolution going, which ended in a revolution that went on for several years and was at least more partially successful and which led to a revolution which in Ireland inspired other colonial revolutions elsewhere, in India, Israel, and many other places. <laughs> 